And then uh, today, Ray Suttle service is at 1 o'clock with the family um, receiving visitors in the parlor at noon. So if you choose to stay for that, uh, you are welcome to do so. And then after the service, there will be a lunch in Pilgrim Hall provided by the day after it. Um, also, mark your calendars on March 10th. Uh, that is when the Lenten studies will begin. And that is interfaith being love in the world. And uh, there's a sign up uh, on the back of your attendance card. If you've already signed up, we gotcha. You don't have to do it more than once. You don't have to count me twice. But if you would like to attend that, just give us a note uh, on the back of your attendance card and pop it into the uh, offering plate. Or you can slide it under the office door, whichever is easiest for you. Does anyone else? Oh, Ken. Yes, he does. Yeah, um, today, after race funeral at 3 o'clock, Strong Community Band concert. And um, we're going to play some easy, challenging music, different styles. And I think they'll really enjoy it. 3 o'clock at 3 at the rec center. Thank you, Ken. If you didn't hear that, that's 3 o'clock at the rec center, the Strongsville Community Band. As always, it's free, but there is a free will offering. And there will be plenty of time for that in your afternoon after uh, Ray's Memorial. Does anyone else have any announcements? Seeing none, let's continue with our worship. <coughs>
but I say to you that listen, I'm sorry, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Thank you, Betty. Well, good morning. good morning. Look what the wind blew in. <laughs> My goodness, it is so good to have you here this morning. Gosh, is there anybody who's here for the first time, Barbara? <laughs> Barbara White is from University Circle. She has been helping out with our free lunch program for, oh gosh, how long? Almost a year. And she's finally decided to dip her toe in the water and see what Sunday morning is like. And sitting next to her is Lois Reisinger, who is Betty Craig's, oh, some kind of shirt tail cousin. <laughs> so, so welcome to both of you. Are there anyone else who's here? Gabby, you got somebody visiting? No. Anyone else who's here for the first time? Excuse me, where's the one you said that's here for the first time? Wave your hand, Wave your hand please. <laughs> now she knows. <laughs> oh gosh, it is so good to have so many people here. Um, yesterday morning I was here for Margot's funeral and the phone rang. And I answered it and found out that Donald Dickinson <coughs> passed away. Donald has not been able to attend for quite some time. I visited him and his wife, Donna, in <coughs> December, and uh, he was not doing well then. So if you knew Donald, um, I'm meeting with his daughter, Roberta, on Tuesday, and we'll know more then what's to come. But March 13th is the, the hopeful date for the memorial, so we have a little time to breathe before that. But I wanted to let you know that, uh, that we have lost another saint. What else do we bring before the Lord on this windy, windy day? <coughs> now Gabby's hand is sneaking up. <coughs> None? Oh, Laura's back. Back in the corner. In a different spot. You can always count on Laura. Um, <laughs> for something. My friend Elizabeth, who I've brought to prayer many, many times, has uh, successfully gone through her, I think it's her 12th surgery. So uh, continued prayers for her, please. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Doug, upstairs. Today is my birthday today. This is, this is Kai. Kai is here with Mackenzie, right? And Christopher. So he's been here one other time, but happy birthday, Kai. And when Thank the kids you. come in, we'll talk about it. Somebody else who has a birthday, too. Others? Go ahead. Friends who also call me mom are all expecting. 
Oh boy, that is exciting. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, don't drink the water and don't sit in that chair. <laughs> Others? Uh, Alex down here. Here comes Myron.
tough act to follow. Oh, children, where are you? Mike always plays something different when you follow. Look at all these children. Oh my gosh. They are taking over. And the good news is they are the future and they give me hope. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you're Tilly, aren't you? When you said it to Oliver, then I recognized you. But for a minute there was like, oh, there's somebody I don't know. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, before we start, there's a did Kai come down? There you are. Kai said today is his birthday. Who else has a birthday today? Penny's birthday is today. Where's Ollie? It's his birthday too. Oh my gosh. So what a great day for birthdays. I have a question for you. What is a blessing? What does blessing mean? Christopher, what does blessing mean to you? When God blesses you, like with hope and strength, what else? What's, a, what's another way? When you think of a blessing, what do you think of? Go ahead, Kai. You say it when he sneezes. You say it when somebody sneezes. Yeah, God bless you. And do you know why they say that? Long ago, they believed that when a person sneezes, your soul leaps out of your body for the brief second. So you say, oh, God bless you, and then your soul goes back in and you're safe. You don't have to worry about the devil getting a hold of you. Luke, <laughs> what did you want to say? Blessing means prayer, and another word for God bless you is Gazoo Day. Yeah. Christopher, did you have something else? Um, so when, like, when you said, like, the sneeze, like, mm -hmm. um, did you know, like, um, we got so long when other people had to say, like, bless you? Why? Because um, some people think that the sneeze or your heart stops for a moment. Right. Some people believe it. It may be true that your heart skips a beat every time you sneeze. So another reason to bless somebody when they sneeze. We're just learning so much this morning. Well, a blessing is really anything good that makes your life a little easier or a little better. Sometimes it doesn't look in the time like it's a blessing, but it turns out to be a blessing. So let's see, do I have a, a, a mobile microphone? We haven't done man on the street for a little while. I, there's the other birthday boy. Um, let's see. Um, Oliver, could you go back and get the mic from, from Jim, and then I'll need two more volunteers. Let's see, let's do Gabby and Anna. Okay, so you go first. Choose somebody out there that you're not related to, and go ask them to tell you something that's a blessing for them. All the children. Amen. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> okay, Gabby, you were good. I think you right. So you go next. Somebody that's not related. I know what That's kind of a cheat, but we'll go with that. Being able to worship with all of you. Thank you. Another good answer. <laughs> Okay, Anna. Oh yeah, she's going to go to the <laughs> This is a stack deck. Go wait for the microphone. Can't leave Tony with the mic. Let's get it back. Well, another day with, with children like this. People like you. It's a blessing, isn't it? Look around. And I see about, oh, I think about 120 blessings sitting with us. And that's just the way God has poured it out for us. Another thing about blessing is that the best thing about it is to be a blessing to someone else. So now as you're coming forward to get your Penny Sunday buckets, because today is Penny Sunday, this is our chance to bless 
Her, the, Herman's house? Is that St. Herman's house? So come and grab a bucket and go see who's going to give you pennies and nickels and dimes and dollars. been so generous to us for us to be able to give back is truly great. <laughs> Thank you. 
your generosity and for your creative mind that has brought us together in this place, each bringing our own gifts, our own talents, and together creating such a beautiful portrait of you. Bless these gifts and the ones who have given them. Bless us as we listen together for your voice to discern how we might best share the good news of the gospel in the world with those who so desperately need to hear it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our second scripture reading this morning is continuing on in Luke uh, chapter 6 from 32 to 38. If you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is it to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemy. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure that you get back. May God bless the reading of this. give us eyes to see where we can better serve you, ears to hear the whisper of your loving voice, and especially a heart mimicking your heart, open to all and open to change. In your name we pray. notice when Betty read the first part how many different ways Luke pretty much said the same thing listen to the list again condensed a little bit love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who mistreat you if someone slaps you on one cheek turn the other cheek also if someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Sounds familiar? And then there's that one more statement that sums up the entire list. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule. One deceptively simple statement from Jesus, 11 little words summing up how we are called to live in community. Or as Eugene Peterson put it, ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. Did you know that every single major world religion has among its major tenets some version of the golden rule? The Baha'i faith puts it this way, lay not on any soul a load that you would not wish to be laid upon you. For a Hindu, the sum of duty requires that we do not do to others what would cause pain if done to you. And our Muslim brothers and sisters would remind us that not one of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. Given the 
universality of such a belief, you would think the world would be making progress, living the golden rule into our daily lives, wouldn't you? But it becomes apparent as we look further into the passage that Jesus is already reminding us it's not going to be as easy as it sounds. We are not just called to love those who love us, or who look like us, or think like us, or believe like us. No, in order to truly live as children of the Most High, we are called simply to love. Period. No questions asked. No buts. And that can be really hard. Let me tell you a story. It was a warm summer night in a small Midwestern town. Jay and his friends were looking to relax, and they decided to head down to the local watering hole, the place that offered karaoke every Friday night and had the best chicken wings and the coldest beer in town. <laughs> Unfortunately, this same watering hole was also on the list of favorite hangouts for a group of bikers who give ordinary, law-abiding motorcycle enthusiasts a bad name. They were only interested in making trouble and inciting violence. Now, Jay was a tall, thin young man and not particularly muscular in build. The bikers took one look at him and decided he was probably a little bit light in his loafers. They decided to have a little fun at his expense. When he left his friends to use the bathroom, the biggest biker followed him, waited till he went in the bathroom, and then blocked the door so Jay couldn't get out. When he realized he was being blocked in, Jay lowered his shoulder and slammed the door and was surprised when it opened. Words were exchanged. He gave the biker a sideways glance and continued back to his table, he grabbed his jacket off the chair and headed for the parking lot, wanting to get some fresh air and clear his head. Looking back, Jay realized he probably should have taken a friend with him. Once outside, the bikers began taunting Jay, calling him names. Their voices grew louder and louder, and the name calling grew worse and worse. Push quite literally came to shove. But Jay was determined not to react. He wasn't really sure what happened next. The next thing he knew, Jay was flat on his back, looking into the concerned face of an emergency medical technician. He had been knocked out cold and had a broken jaw. He never saw it coming. He certainly didn't deserve it, and he never had the chance to retaliate. But later, when he was being treated at the hospital, he told the nurses he wouldn't have hit back anyway, even if he had seen it coming. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others. Even when they beat you and call you horrible names and try all manner of things to provoke you to fight back. Somehow, Jay found the strength of faith to hear Jesus' voice and respond in grace and mercy. This is exactly what God calls us to do. In the face of pain and injustice in the world, we are called to be the voice for the voiceless and to love the unlovable. Now in Jay's case, which really happened, by the way, it's pretty easy to figure out who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. That's not always the case, though, is it? For instance, the church, where we are promised we can find shelter and safety, has been in the news an awful lot this week. Catholic cardinals and priests, as well as hundreds of Southern Baptist leaders and lay people alike, are being charged with horrific sexual misconduct. Now, I am sure there are offenders in other denominations as well, and probably even in the United Church of Christ, if we keep shining that light bright enough. It's heartbreaking to think how often we place our trust in people called to serve God, only to find they still have heavy, crumbling feet of clay after all. But again, as the light is shined, 
it becomes more clear who is the enemy here, and that's who we are called somehow to love, period. Now, I'm sure most of you know that before I came to this wonderful, welcoming church, I was United Methodist, born and bred. And I still have a great fondness for John Wesley's theology and for Charles Wesley's poetry in music. But this weekend, my heart is heavy and prayerful for my United Methodist brothers and sisters. Sorry. This week, a special general conference has been called and continues to meet in St. Louis, even as we speak. Over 800 delegates from across the globe are gathered to decide the fate and future of non-heterosexuals in the United Methodist Church. In a nutshell, the purpose of this gathering is to decide whether or not beautiful, loving followers of the Christ like my brother Jim and his husband Jim, are worthy of the full spectrum of human rights offered to straight people in terms of their pursuit to follow God. At the end of the general conference, the church will vote and may decide not to allow open, practicing non-heterosexuals to pursue ordination and leadership in the United Methodist Church. In other words, these delegates may decide that something wonderful that's good enough for them is not good enough for everyone. And that makes me very, very sad, not just because my brother Jim and his husband Jim are terrific, funny guys. It makes me sad because Jesus himself told us repeatedly to do unto others as we would have done unto ourselves. The golden rule. But just like Pharisees in Jesus' day, some church leaders believe they know the heart of God better than Jesus knows the heart of God. So I ask you throughout the rest of your day today and into the week to keep the worldwide United Methodist Church in your prayers and pray that the delegates might receive eyes to see one another as they are seen by God, and to love one another accordingly, period. Now yesterday afternoon, we bid a fond farewell to Margaret James, longtime member of Strongsville UCC. In a couple of hours, we will be celebrating Ray Suttle's life with family and friends. Both of these saints lived long and faithful lives Margot faced more than her share of adversities as she grew up in World War II Germany and then came across the ocean to the United States. Ray, in his 86 years, lost two wives, a daughter, and the tip of a finger. <laughs> now they have arrived at the pearly gates. They have been greeted by St. Peter and their loved ones who had already gone before and are, I am certain, experiencing the unspeakable joy of basking in God's holy presence. This, friends, is what God desires for each one of us. I believe when we are gathered in at the last day, everyone will be there who desires to be there. I believe God would never force someone to hang around if that person chose to remain apart from God. But I also believe God would never deny anyone who earnestly sought God's heart, no matter how they chose to worship or who they chose to love. God created each one of us perfect. God's intention, I believe, is to have each one of God's children gathered round the table in time for the eternal banquet. We have the power to decide for God. Jesus has already shown us where God stands on this issue. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. 
If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes something that belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. Let's stand together and sing hymn number 648, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, which if I remember correctly was written by Charles Wesley. <laughs>
So on that cheery note, <laughs> as you go forth from this place, you are the sunlight, you are the flowers, you are the life in the world. So take the joy that you have received this morning and the hope and the comfort and take it with you into a world that has to hear it again and again and again because we so quickly forget. Go in peace. Amen.